Hi Floss 2. It's Arlene here. It's Monday, February 17th. It's President's Day here in the United States. And I'm happy to be back here with you all. Um, welcome to those who have come back and come for another visit and a special welcome for those who might be new to my channel. Um, I really appreciate everyone who's stopped by. I know my last couple of videos have been fairly light on showing stitching and I've shared that I couldn't show things. I was There was a lot of secret stitching going on. This video is going to make up for that. At least I hope it is because I have a lot of stitching to show with, to share with you today and I'm excited for that. Um, most of my, well, the stitching from the last few months and the reason why it's been kept secret and I shared this in the my last video is that I'm going to be headed to the Nashville Needlework Market this year. I'm not an official vendor there. Uh, I don't have my own room. Um, I'm going as a visitor. I'm going with the idea that might be where I'm headed next year to be a vendor, to be an exhibitor, to be selling. Um, but to go this year as a visitor, to learn what it is all about, to see it in action, to network, to talk to people, to talk to designers, to talk to store owners, to get the full sense of what the event is all about, um, I think is going to put me in a good place to potentially be there next year uh, as a vendor. I know that there are at least a couple people out there who have done this kind of thing, gone one year as a visitor, designers who have done this thing, gone one year as a visitor and then followed it up by then being a part of uh, the event as a vendor the following year. So that that's where I'm headed in just about two and a half weeks. Um, uh, I am making an assumption here, so let me take a step back. Most people in the cross-stitch world are familiar with this, but if you're not, the Nashville Needlework Market is a once-a-year wholesale show. It is where designers, um, fabric companies, thread companies come together and where store owners go and buy things. Uh, while store owners can buy things all year round, it's the once-a-year in-person shopping opportunity. It's a cash and carry market. So... Um, Designers and everyone who is a vendor who is selling show up with full cars, full suitcases, full boxes that have been shipped, however they're arriving. And the store owners show up with empty suitcases, empty cars, empty whatever. And the idea is by the end of the three days, the designers and the vendors are going home with empty suitcases, empty boxes, empty, well, they're not going to bring home the empty boxes, uh, empty cars. And the store owners are going home with the full cars and the full boxes and the full suitcases. Uh, so um, often those stores then have a big market night where they're showing off a lot of new and exciting releases. Uh, a lot of designers seem to save their best so to speak, for this time of year. It's the first weekend in March. Um, it's exciting as a designer to start to get my feet wet into this, this aspect of the stitching world. And so I wanted to participate in my own way this year. Hoffman, which is a big distributor of cross-stitch, um, and they distribute my designs as well as being able to sell, being able to purchase them on Etsy, my Etsy store. Um, they are going to have my four new releases in their vending room. So I'm about to show you my Nashville releases uh, and I'm excited. I've been holding on to these for a few months now, the ideas and then the stitching and the creation of them. I did some sneak peeks and even in my last video I gave you some hints of what was coming. So I'm excited to show you where I where everything is. Uh, they So they will be first available at market in um, the first weekend of March in Nashville. Uh, please tell your store owners they can they can purchase them in Hoffman at Hoffman's room. They will be available in my Etsy store right after National Market. So if you see anything you like here, uh, keep in mind those two purchasing opportunities. So the first one to share with you, I believe when I was doing my video last month, I was giving a one-word hint. And the first one, actually, you know what? I should have looked at my last video to remember what order I did it in last. It doesn't matter. This is the order I'm going to do it in this time. So one of the ones I gave you a hint about, the the um, the hint word was lace, which shouldn't surprise many of you. A number of my designs have lace as their inspiration. And this is the lace piece that I am debuting at this time. I call it floral lace. Uh, it is, if you can... It, maybe at first glance you think, huh, is that different shades going on there? 
No, it is all done in, in white in B5200, but it is done with different strands, different number of strands. So there's areas where there's one strand of thread, there's areas where there's two strands of thread, and there's areas where there's three strands of thread. And it just gives such a wonderful effect. It adds some dimension and um, just a neat look to it. It is the same effect that I used. This was um, a piece that I did. This was the you know, August issue of Just Cross Stitch and the one where my piece made it onto the cover. It's the same effect that I'd use there with one, two, and three strands of stitching. So floral lace is the pattern. Um, and I mean, I suppose you could just do it using three different colors or you could just stitch it all in one color. Um, I chose to stitch it on a navy fabric with white thread just to make it really pop. Uh, um, this, this is, um, oh, so in order to stitch it using three strands, I'm going to say you really kind of need to do it on 28 count or 14 count Ada. Um, I, I'm always so hesitant to use that word need to in any stitching decisions you make. Um, you should be able to do use whatever fabric, whatever threads you want. If you want this effect of using the three different strands, the three different one strand, two strands, and three strands of thread, let's all just be honest, there are certain fabric counts where it's going to be hard to get three strands of thread through. And so that's why 28 count is kind of really the way to go for this particular design. Um, but that said, use your own creativity and power. Um, I'll also say I, I stitched it vertically. I have it on the front cover of my pattern vertically, but there's absolutely no reason why it couldn't be horizontal. Uh, so there you go my first design to share with you. Um, the stitching here done on 28 count is a little over five by eight inches, just to give you a sense of the size. So, you know, compared to my, my head size, uh, it's, it's, uh, 71 by 115 stitches. So not that large, just a nice stitch. Really enjoyed stitching it myself. Okay. The next one to share with you, I think, the hint word I gave was history. Um, in thinking about what I wanted to put out there for my market releases this year, um, as I'm trying to introduce myself to the, the bigger, larger audience of uh, cross-stitch stores um, out there, while my designs really run a gamut, there are a few themes that constantly, that consistently come up. One is lace, being inspired by lace designs, and another is being inspired by historical sources. Uh, I've shared many times about going to old pattern books, and by old, I usually am talking about a few centuries old, and being inspired by patterns and thing in motifs that I am finding there, and bringing them with a 21st century look to 21st century eyes. And so I wanted to make sure from these natural releases, I made sure to have at least one of each of those kind, a lace design and one that was inspired by history. And so this is the one that I'm calling Italian Tiles. Uh, it is a square. Um, I stitched this on 36 count, uh, one over two. And that makes it just a little under the stitching, seven inches by seven inches. It's 122 by 122 stitches. Very geometric, very um, symmetrical. Um, although not perfectly symmetrical, you could see these motifs here are different. Uh, I It's three colors. I spent a long time debating what colors I wanted to do this in. I played around with the various color schemes on the, on the computer and ended up going with this one, but really you get quite a different look if you chose different color schemes. Now I want to share with you a little bit about where this comes from. So here it is, the pattern. Uh, and as I as I try to write and share, let me just take this out of the plastic so you could see something here. Um, I try to share in my patterns as appropriate as when, the, when there's something to share, the, the source of information. This source Oh, let me share. So there's a picture. And I'm hoping you can see if I turn it on an angle. Uh, let's see. Where's the camera? I'm hoping you could see that's where 
the pattern or the design came from. Uh, it is from a pattern book that was published in Venice, hence Italian, in 1546, done by Matteo Pagano, Spicio di Pensiero del Bel et Virtuoso Don. I've totally butchered that Italian there, but it's written out for you here. Um, and there was something about the geometry when I saw this, the, the, the repetitiveness of it, that truly you could take what I've done here and, you know, even repeat it more. I mean, you could see how this is the beginning of another square. If you, I don't know, had some rectangular shape you wanted to create a table runner for or something, you could literally repeat this design as needed or just st st stitch one square of it or use these little motifs in some way. Uh, but it, it makes me think of an, a neat tile design and Italian tiles is what I've called it. And there you go, that's number two. Uh, let's see, the next one I will do, uh, I think the word, I think I used words as the hint in my last video. Uh, I. If only, I think I only have one other pattern, one or two other patterns that have words on them. I I know when I was like in high school and college, I used to love to collect quotes and find meaningful words in various places and, and um, all those kinds of things that, that, that really have meaning and, and touch me in some way. Some months back, this is actually the first one that I stitched and decided, you know what, I'm going to save it as a market release. I encountered an essay, and I guess that's the best way to call it an essay, written by a man by the name of John Perry Barlow in 1977, and he was 30 years old. And he called it, it was a list of principles of adult behavior. And well, let me show you. This is what I have created. Do I have it? Yep, there we go. Let me just read to you what is here. I, by the way, I call this pattern how to live. How to live? Be patient. Expand your sense of the possible. Don't trouble yourself with matters you truly cannot change. Expect no more of anyone than you can deliver yourself. Tolerate ambiguity, ambiguity, amb, ambu, I can't pronounce it, ambiguity, ambu, you know what I'm saying. Don't badmouth. Laugh at yourself frequently. Concern yourself with what is right rather than who is right. Never forget that no matter how certain, you might be wrong. Learn the needs of those around you and respect them. Praise at least as often as you disparage. Admit your errors freely and soon. Become less suspicious of joy. Understand humility. Remember that love forgives much. Foster dignity. Live memorably. Love yourself. Endure. I just, it, as a part of his list, there were actually a number of other things. I. I took the list and did the ones that really spoke to me. In between each of those are different motifs. These are all different little motifs um, that just help tie it all together. I used six different colors, six different colors. You could do this all in one color. You could use more than six colors. This is just what I chose to do it with. Uh, I just, there was something just very powerful about putting this all together and being able to hang something like this on the wall. I think it, it speaks, it really does speak to me. Um, I love how, and I found this sort of with, um, I find this on a website or did I find this? I think this was on a website. He was quoted as saying, I don't expect perfect. This is John Perry Barlow. I don't expect perfect attainment of these principles. However, I post them as a standard for my conduct as an adult. Should any of my friends or colleagues catch me violating any one of them, bust me. I think that's a good way to live. And that's kind of why I titled it How to Live. So I am fully aware there are some stitchers that are not word stitchers. That's fine. 
Um, but there are some stitchers that very much are word stitchers, and perhaps this is the kind of thing that appeals to you. And then the last one to share with you is one that I'm really excited about. <sighs> the background story, I was at an art exhibit, an, an exhibit in a gallery, and I saw something that just really appealed to my eye and made me think that could be done using cross stitch. The word I used in that in the video last month was I think it was repetition. It was either repeated or repetition. And so what I've created I'm calling landscape. Now if you look carefully this is all cross stitch. These are all full crosses. And it is the same motif, the same little, I'm just going to focus down here for a second, you know, one particular motif that is repeated over and over. Uh, but to get an effect of just simply a sky with a couple of hills and a sun, some of those motifs are partially done in green and blue. I've used variegated thread. This is in, I use Gentle Arts um, because it especially gives a wonderful effect. I just this is just something different and I know there was some video back when I was working on it maybe in December where I made a comment that I'm stitching on something that I just know is very different and I I hope others are gonna enjoy it as much as I'm enjoying it um, it's I, I it was a fun thing to stitch I mean what I basically did was I tried to hit all the places where there was transition, you know, where I really needed to look at the pattern. And then there was a lot of places to just fill in and it was a matter of finding a nice trail to follow. Um, I just, it just gave me a lot of pleasure to do this. I want to do more designs like this, figuring out a scene or a, a scene for lack of better words and making, taking a motif and creating that scene using that motif over and over. Um, certainly variegated thread lends itself to this. I've, I've included to the best you can DMC equivalents. Um, I think the variegation, especially for a scene that involves sky and, and land, you know, just adds to it that much. Uh, but I am hoping there's some people out there saying, wow, that's pretty cool. I want to give that a try. Um, because I already have in the works the beginnings of another one that's kind of like this. Um, I'm also in the middle of charting another lace pattern right now. So even though I'm excitedly sharing you my Nashville releases, I'm already thinking ahead beyond Nashville at this point. So here it is, the fourth one, Landscape. Uh, and um, like I said, done in four colors of uh, gentle arts. The other thing is that I purposely did size this one to be five by seven inches um, to fit in a five by seven inch frame. And um, working on trying to, to consciously think when appropriate when I can to think about when I could do a design that would fit in a standard size frame for those who want to just be able to go to your local Michaels, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, what have you, and be able to pick up a frame. Um, and so this one fits in a, in a five by seven frame for that purpose. And I also sort of thought, I don't want to make it too big because you make it too big and the repeated motifs really do get too boring. This size worked out just fine. So there you go. Those are my four um, Nashville releases that I am excited that I get the opportunity to share with you all. Um, if you listen to Fiber Talk, uh, the uh, podcast that I am on once a month with Gary, um, this coming Wednesday, well, it all depends when you're listen when you're watching this. Again, I'm filming this on Monday, February 17th. This coming Wednesday is my turn to be on uh, show on the show with Gary and we're talking a little bit about my patterns along with some other things and there's also a video that goes with that so you'll see these all again um, if you're interested in watching that uh, but I definitely wanted to make sure to share this with my floss tube viewers those who um, have been my my friends here as well as those of you who might be stopping by for the first time so I hope you like what I've put together here I'm going to move on to some other things here. Uh, again, I told you there was a lot of stitching to show. And so what you've just seen is what a lot I've been stitching in the last few months, but there's more. So I'm going to go back to 
August, uh, yes, I know it was after the New Jersey retreat last um, August, and there was some stitching going on then that I couldn't show you, but I can show you now because it is in the current issue of Just Cross Stitch. So this is the April issue that just came out. I know people have gotten their digital subscriptions. Some people have commented to me that they got their paper copies. I uh, I don't know exactly when you might find it in stores, but it's it's probably out there. I I personally have not looked yet to see if I could find it in a store. Um, I so meant to get the page all ready to go, and then I didn't. But give me a second. In here, you will find. Sorry. Uh, all right, I could look at the table of contents. And then I could go to the correct page. Oh, I was looking too far in. That's why. You will find my lavender biscornu. And here is the actual biscornu. So, um, I the the stitching the what they are showing here, the 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 top, if we're gonna call it that. I realized even as I was stitching it, like I, I had submitted the design, the di design was accepted, woohoo, I was stitching it. And I realized as I was stitching it that, hmm, I could have done this a little bit differently in that I had two very good square designs and each of them alone could have made a Biscorno top. And the bottom part of the Biscorno didn't need to be as involved as what I've created because here is one side of the biscornu, here is the other side of the biscornu, and I want to say usually when you see a biscornu, the quote bottom side isn't as mm, complex. Like you often see, um, if you're holding it like this, a really interesting thing going on in the corners, and then not so much in the center part. So. You know, it's just one of those lessons learned, you know, if I do some Biscornu designing in the future that I need to sort of think about it in a different way. Because again, I was thinking I'm going to create two really cool squares and put them together. And I did create two really cool squares and put them together. Um, and so what uh, Just Cross Stitched has, so they put this one on the top or you know, they're showing this as the main um, picture. And then they did, without showing you the chart, they're calling this Lavender Biscornu A. And then on the next page, you get a picture and you can see the other side. So really, you could stitch your own, like, you can make two biscornus. You can make this one and do whatever you want on the bottom and then make this one separate. Um, but so there you go. The lavender biscorno in the flesh, so to speak. Again, this is the April issue that has just come out. It has a cross on the center, so um, that might bring it to your attention. Um, lots of springy designs in this one. So again, this was secret stitching from way back in the summer that I was working on. And more stitching to show you, uh, although this one isn't secret stitching, it's just what I've been working on in the last month or so. When I finished the last of my, um, the Italian tiles was the last one stitched of these four um, Nashville designs. And I was just looking for a little bit of a break, a little bit of a, a palette cleanser, for lack of better words, of, of stitching my own designs. Um, I thought I was going to be working on my own canvas work design, but I realized I was, I just, I needed to do something different. And so literally right after I did that last video, I, I want to say it was like the week after I did that last video or not even a week, I had this idea and I went to my LNS and I just made it happen. And it's what I've been working on the last few weeks and it's, and it's almost done. So I've shared with you here, um, in one of my early videos. And then again, not that long ago, a few months back because it had come up during a fiber talk uh, conversation. A piece that I did, a design by Curtie Biggs, who designs under the name Three Dills Designs, uh, counted canvas work. Um, if you've ever seen Curtie Biggs designs, they are very um, complex. 
They're beautiful, but they're very complex and they have many layers to them, meaning complex stitches, but also a complexity with colors. And that has always made them, to my eyes, a little busy. Other people love that look. A few years ago, I took one of those designs and created my own colorway to it, meaning I eliminated the issue of, of the busyness of color and just used different threads that were all basically blue, navy blue and gold, and did a, a blue and gold colorway of one of her designs and eliminated and changed a few of the stitches as well, uh, but loved what I did with it. So I somehow it was on my mind and I thought, you know, I kind of want to do something like that again. So I did. <laughs> I went and picked up another, I was looking for another Threedles design that would be about the same size that I could, you know, create a, a um, you know, something that goes with the first one that I have. And I realized it, like in the long run, it might even be like, there might be a third one in a few years. Like it's, it's not a high priority by any means, but there's a vision that there might be a third one. But this one that I'm working on right now, I picked out this one called A Different View. And that is one colorway that she has created. And if you take a look at, um, if you can see, there's a lot of complex stitches on the, Again, it's counted canvas work done on 18 count canvas. There's a lot of complex stitches. She has a lot of different kinds of threads. She has a lot of different colors going on. She actually did two, three different colorways. And this is a smaller picture, so I don't know how. So there's, nope, where's my finger? This one is the one I just showed you. Um, but there was that colorway and that colorway. And again, to my eyes, there's a lot going on in those designs that I just wanted to change it up a little bit. So here is what I've created. So using red and gold this time. The gold threads that I've used are basically the same gold threads that were used in my blue and gold piece. I'm using the same 18 count canvas in that it is in a crew color with gold um, speckling. I don't know what you call Can you see that there's like gold threads running through it? I guess you would call it like that. Um, there's different types of red threads. I have red silks. I have red velvet. I have red metallic. Uh, I think there's a red rayon. There's So there's to give different effects, different textures. If I hold it at an angle, you could see there's some dimensionality to it, which I love. Um, just even, you know, here's here's the velvet, and comparing that velvet to this shininess that's right here of this metallic, just you know, the the play on on the light that you get from these different um, places is just so appealing to my eye, and that's what I love it. Now. The piece also needs a lot of beads and um, haven't gotten there yet. And I'm at, so just as of last night, I've just about finished all the stitching. When I say just about, you may notice here and here looks kind of empty. And that's because I've run out of a thread. Um, this particularly shiny metallic, which is called Fireworks. It's a rainbow gallery called Fireworks. Yeah, I ran out of it. Um, so next weekend I will be at my LNS and I will cross my fingers that they still that they have another card of it and I will be able to finish the stitching. In the meantime, I will get started on the beading. There are red and gold beads to put in various places um, and it will all come together. So again, just where that paper go. It gives a very different look. Um, and then in addition to this, you could see the general outline. There's four octagons and then the smaller squares. But the detail, like she actually provided six different octagons to choose from. And, and then the, the square placement, like there's a lot, there's some decisions to make on your own of which octagons to use, where to place the squares and so on. So even if... Like you couldn't even completely match up 
this design or what you see in this picture to mine because I think like she used a different octagon in this picture or something like that. Um, but here you go. I'm trying to get you a little bit closer um, just to see some of what's going on in this. Um, I realize every time I've posted on Instagram, I've kind of had it in a different orientation. And when I was stitching last night, or when I've been stitching the most recently, I've been working on this octagon. So I guess I've been holding it like this. Um, I'm trying to think which, I guess I think of this as the top only because of the way I started it, but it really kind of doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but I hope that inspires people, you know, whether it's cross stitch or canvas work or whatever you're doing to always, always, always keep in mind that you can change things up. You can make it your own by choosing different colors or different threads or different fabric or whatever. Um, sometimes it's hard to see past what the model looks like. I'll, I'll grant you that. Um, but if you can see past it and focus on like the, the first one I did of this, the cathedral, I was able to see past the colors only because I loved the shape of it. And in going to the store and picking out one this time around, I could totally see past all of the colors because I knew in my mind what I was doing. I knew I was going red and gold. Like this had, I had the vision already. Um, if I did something like this again, if I did a third one, which would kind of make a nice like um, a trio hanging on a wall. I have a vision of red, of, excuse me, of green and gold. So a blue and gold, a red and gold, and a green and gold with them tied together with the same accru and gold fabric or canvas, the same gold threads involved, same gold beads involved, and just that color with the different types of threads um, would make it. So that is my current stitching and like I said it will almost be done. I'm hoping the timing works out that just as I'm done with this I am ready to start stitching. Um, as I mentioned before there's a, a lace project that I'm or a cross stitch pattern that I'm working on based on a piece of lace and um, I'm hoping that's going to be my next stitching project uh, which hopefully will turn into a pattern down the line that I can offer to all of you. So this video is a little over 30 minutes, um, but I've shared everything I was going to share. A lot more stitching here than in the last few videos, um, but I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've been up to. I am so glad that I get this opportunity to share with all of you. Um, please do go and listen to Fiber Talk. There are so many wonderful guests and so much wonderful sharing and knowledge that goes on on those podcasts. I will link below the website so you, you can listen through the website. You can listen through YouTube. You can also listen through um, any podcast player that you have on your phone or tablet or whatever. Um, I want to say many devices come with some podcast listening app already on them. Um, you know, figure out how you do it is really going to be depending on your device. Um, but there's ways to figure out, or the default could certainly be going to the website or the YouTube site, um, the YouTube channel. Uh, so I just always encourage that. Um, it's so great to be here and to be sharing stitching with all of you. This community is just wonderful. Thank you for all the support. Uh, I appreciate it. I, I, I hope you've enjoyed what I've shared with you today, please, please let me know. Um, I, I admit I am nervous about being a part of all of this. Uh, I, I hope that my trip to Nashville will be, that I'll feel that it's been a success, that I'll feel like I've come away with good contacts, good connections, that I'll feel excited about, you know, the whole market experience and what I could do being a part of it in the future. Um, but I admit right now I'm just nervous about it. Uh, so I'm just hoping everything will be good. Um, so thank you all so much for being here. I so appreciate it. I appreciate so much your comments, your words of support. Appreciate the subscription, subscribing and the thumbs up. You know, those are the things that are important in YouTube world to keep all of us FOSS2 people, make, you know, making the videos um, and making sure that YouTube shows it to other people so we can keep sharing and keep being a part of this world. 
I think that's about it for now. Till next time. Bye.